Welcome back to Will and Mabel and another Q&A episode and today we're discussing resource garden. If you are new here my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviourist and on this channel I make videos just like this one to try and help people become the best possible canine leaders that are able to raise perfect canine companions. So if you are new here please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future episode. Now recently I had a question from one of you guys saying that your Connie Corso puppy once they hit about six months of age has started growling when either the kid kids, the other dogs or themselves go near them when they're eating. Now this is very commonly and rightly so uh, talked about under the resource guarding category. Now resource guarding is a very complex canine behavioural topic and it's something that you could do a dozen hour long lectures on but what I'm going to do is try and give you an overpinning of the theory of why resource guarding happens how to try and preemptively stop resource guarding from happening in the first place, and then what you can do to stop resource guarding if it started to happen like the person that left the comment in the first place. So resource guarding technically is a very normal canine behavior. Canines value things very strongly, especially food, access to the comfy spots, uh, access to water, access to mating partners, access to chewing things, bones and toys. Now that would be very common in the wild and part of normal pack dynamics is dogs being able to establish who has access to the best things and who needs to wait their turn or who has access to the worst things. And like I say, it's very normal canine behavior and it's very hierarchical in the way that canines work and the, how the pack dynamics work. Now, now this is one of those things that kind of very commonly comes under the dominance argument and positive only trainers will try and dismiss it as complete nonsense and that you can positivity your way out of resource guarding. Now unfortunately once resource guarding is set in that's very often not the case and it's very difficult to positive reinforcement your way out of resource guarding. Now like I say I'm going to get on to how you deal with resource guarding a little bit later in the video but that's kind of where resource guarding comes in. It's a very innate canine behavior and it is very normal in the wild. The problem arises is that you bring those behaviors into a home environment and you'll see dogs then displaying those behaviors around food, around the human's food around access to the sofa or to the bed or around access to chew toys or ropes and it is a very very common probably the most common reason that people get bit especially young children and toddlers as a toddler you'll take your eye off them for a second the toddler will waddle over to the dog that's chewing on its bone in the corner the dog displays normal communication tactics of the eye contact, the hackles going up, the head position, the ears, the tail, then they'll move on to baring their teeth. The toddler has no kind of, uh, way of understanding what the dog's trying to communicate, so they keep pressing forward to try and take the thing off them. The growling kicks in, eventually a little warning snap will kick in, and then a bite happens. Very normal canine behavior, but it is... Um, a common common cause for bites. They're not necessarily always the most serious of bites, they're more warning bites, but it's one of the most common reasons that dogs get put down through aggression. So that's kind of why resource guarding happens. And the very simple way to understand how to stop resource guarding is to restructure your relationship with your dog. Again, if we go back to the dogs in the wild analogy, a dog that is at the bottom of the pack would not dare question a dog at the top of the pack, and we can call it alpha and dominance, but it is easily is disputed and it's a very hot topic but it's just simply is the truth. Dogs will naturally communicate using those methods and dogs will naturally fall in line with the most alpha or the most dominant or the strongest best leader of that pack will have access to those things. This very simple way that we need to stop resource guarding is to have that relationship with our dog where we are unquestionably, undeniably, their very calm, consistent leader. Now, we don't need to resort to any physical harsh punishments to get to that stage, but if your dog is showing any form of resource guarding, it is a very, very clear, evident sign that your dog does not see you as its clear consistent leader and the fact that it has the audacity to show those resource guarding behaviors is a very ultimately worrisome problem and it's something that I try and tell people to start from day one to not let it happen.
happen in the first place and if it starts to happen it's something that has to be nipped in the bud so it's like the canary down the mines it's the initial sign of huge problems to come and like I say it's a telltale sign that your relationship is broken so the very first thing you either need to do preemptively from day one is to establish that you are your dog's calm consistent leader or if you're starting to notice resource guarding problems you need to restructure that relationship so that your dog sees you as the calm consistent leader and then you can implement some of my strategies some of my routines I'm going to discuss in a minute to help really def uh, fix the resource guarding problem from happening in the first place now if you've been now, if you've been watching this channel for any time, you'll know that I often talk about my bootcamp course. And it's my online course that there's a link down in the description box to below that is my most prized, most proud of thing in my professional career. It is the protocol that I use for pretty much every behavioral problem that I use. It's a one month protocol that I get owners to put themselves and their dogs through so that it instantly restructures that relationship so that the dog learns to be a calm, relaxed, well-mannered, dog that looks to you for direction because it sees you as the calm consistent leader the process usually takes around a month which is why I made the boot camp protocol a month long and what people tend to find is that if they follow it properly by the time they come out of the month that a lot of the problem behaviors that have come to me to fix in the first place naturally just drift away because those problem behaviors are often symptoms of a broken relationship between you and your dog so if you're just getting your dog and you're watching this video to try and preempt these problems from happening I highly recommend either if you're adopting an adult dog put your dog through a boot camp from the second it comes home and then by the time it comes out of that month you can ease off on the boot camp protocol but your dog will very clearly understand the dynamics that you are the leader and that will stop resource guarding from happening if you're getting an eight week old puppy that's where my perfect puppy course comes in you put them through that perfect puppy course and again that will make the dog see the puppy see you as they grow up from day one as as their leader will stop resource guarding happening in the first place if you've got a dog that is displaying resource guarding tendencies again put them through a boot camp protocol refix that relationship and then the drill that I did a video on a few days ago that you will have seen where I showed a video of one of the guys that has taken my perfect puppy course demonstrating with their very young Connie Corso puppy the routine around mealtime now if you can get the structure in place with the relationship and then utilize this trick with meal times that is the single best way of stopping resource gardening from happening and then we'll tack on a few little bits that I'm going to discuss in just a second so that routine very simply is about you never leave food down for your dog nor and again this is kind of a process talked about in the boot camp course you never leave toys down for the dog and you never allow them access to the furniture or the sofa or the bed anywhere that they're showing resource guarding you remove them free access to that thing that in Instantly will help by claiming that this either food or this toy or this bed is mine and you only have it when I allow you to have it again that will start those cogs turning with fixing that relationship and the dog will start to understand that to gain access to the thing that it wants it has to be calm well mannered obedient and well behaved food is a great way to kind of drill this I always utilize don't leave food down put the food in the bowl you put the dog into a sit and stay put the food down and you keep them in a sit and stay until you tell them to break now you can do this by putting the food down sit and stay two seconds let them break then next time five seconds then 30 seconds then back to 15 but then up to 45 back to 30 up to 60 and you'll notice that as things go on you start to increase that time and as you increase that time and the dog learns that restraint and that impulse control that will naturally through that restraint and impulse control will allow the dog to see that you own the food and that you're allowing them to have it what you can also also do is put the food down and while they're in the sit and stay pick it up pretend to eat a little bit put it down it's all about that claiming that you are the leader in this relationship at no point do you need to be hitting a dog hurting them this isn't a overly punitive approach it's just not a overly positive approach either it's a calm leadership based approach and I can't stress that enough this comes from a breakdown in the relationship and if you've got that clear relationship in the first place like I demonstrated with my friend that sent in that video clip in that video 
He's done that from day one with his puppy, so that puppy will always respect him as the leader, and food is the most common cause of resource guarding. If you can remove resource guarding through food, then everything else naturally, again, will then fall into place, because it's the easiest way to drill the fact that this food is mine, and I'm gonna allow you to have it if you do X, Y, and Z, which in this case is to sit and stay and wait there until I tell you otherwise. Use the same drill if you're noticing that resource guarding happens when you're on the sofa and you try and sit next to your dog or move it and it starts to growl, again, remove them from it. Do not give them access to the sofa until you tell them otherwise. Sit, stay, and you wait until you're welcomed up. If they show that behavior, you remove them from it and you claim that sofa is yours. Again, you're consistent with those things and the dog will start to learn that that resource guarding over time will become a learnt behavior that it works. You go near the food, the dog growls, looks up at you, gives you that and you back away. Oh, cool, that worked. I'll do that again next time someone comes near me. Same with the sofa. Oh, that worked. Worked. Whereas if you flip it and it goes, oh, as soon as I showed that, they moved me off it and didn't let me sit on it again. But when I was sitting and I was calm and I was relaxed, they then let me back up. You drill that 100% consistency in the household with everybody, not just you. Everybody needs to take that approach and I promise you, you'll get there and you'll get over it. Resource guarding is a huge warning sign for big problems to come, but also it is a problem that can quite quickly be overcome. It just simply has to start with restructuring that relationship. And if you don't know how to do that, I can't recommend my bootcamp course enough for you. Again, the link is down in the description box below. I hope that helped. I hope you found it interesting. Click like if you did, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you are new here leave any comments down in the comment section below if you've got any other questions that you want me to do a video like this where we do kind of a deep dive into the more theory and the behavior side of why these problems happen again i say it in every video i don't just want to demonstrate it and then you go and attempt to carbon copy it without understanding why we do what we do if you can get the theory and understand why we do what we do then you don't need me you can do it yourself and that is where you'll become a high level canine leader so put in the effort get yourself to that level and i promise you you'll have a perfect canine companion.